Welcome to one of my highly anticipated videos. I get people asking all the time, can I do a video on simple boost control? And today is the day. We're gonna go over it and just show you quickly and simply how to set up boost control for Mega Squirt. And this example will be a Mega Squirt 2 or Micro Squirt. And this is the solenoid that we're looking at. So this is a three port style Mac valve. Uh, there are all kinds of variations with this. I will send you a link in the description that you can get uh, one of these for significantly less money, but this is a good example from DIY Auto-Tune. They have uh, an example here of how to connect it and what the settings we need to run it at. And uh, right here, the frequency is really what we're looking for. And so this gives us some solid information that we can use and we'll refer back to. So let's jump over into the software real quick and I'll show you why this frequency is important. So if we go back over to Tuner Studio, the very first thing you're going to need to do is go up to boost slash advanced on the dropdown and we're gonna enable boost control. So you wanna go to boost control settings and currently it's off. So we just need to toggle down, hit on, and now boost control is activated. Now this is why we need that frequency from the DIY Auto-Tune website, is the solenoid has a frequency that it likes to be pulsed at. And every solenoid is a little bit different, but typically these MAC valves use, they use 19 to 40 hertz. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and just set this to that 19.5 as a start. You can uh, try using 26 and 39 in different duty cycles, but for this example, because I know it works, I've got one on my car working, let's go with 19.5 hertz. I've, I've got this set up here, okay? You can leave the control interval at 10 milliseconds, and then we need to decide which pin, which wire going into the ECU is controlling the solenoid. and in a lot of cases, you get a few different options on, on mega squirts, but F idle is the one that I'm using. It's a specific wire that usually runs an idle valve solenoid, but in this case, I use it for boost control. Uh, it's a green wire and it will say F idle on it on a micro squirt, for example, which is what I have running. And you can leave the output polarity normal. Um, it's most solenoids like this one. It doesn't matter if the positive or negative are switched around, it will still function the same. It will still just open and close as normal. So you don't have to worry about polarity when you're wiring it up, which is really nice. And then the algorithm, this will be the most simple uh, way to set this up. We're gonna do open loop. That means you just set a duty cycle and it will just run that duty cycle. It's not taking any other inputs to try and keep your boost at a certain level. So. This is the most rudimentary, keep it basics, keep it simple. Uh, the next thing we need to do over on the right is set the boost cut. So anytime you're turbocharging a vehicle and you've got a standalone ECU that can do this, absolutely set it up. It is a huge safety that can save you a motor or have other problems if you uh, overboost. So make sure that you have the overboost set up correctly, uh, 200 kPa would be 14.7 pounds of boost. So one atmosphere or one bar. And so say in our case, we're trying to target right around that 15 PSI or one atmosphere. We can set this to like 210 or 220, for example. And so if boost goes past uh, 220 KPA, uh, it will boost cut and just cut the motor momentarily and then we'll know that we've we've gone over boost so this is just going to save us a lot of headaches if for some reason it jumped to like 30 psi and and hurt the motor this would prevent that so while you're testing especially while you're setting a boost control make sure that is on all right well everything in here is looking good we real quick let's just go over this setup the top reference for the wastegate goes over to the number two port on the three port solenoid and the number one port goes over to a T which goes from the boost reference from the turbo right over to the bottom port of the wastegate and 
the next thing we need to do is go to this boost control duty table. It's under the same tab, boost and advance. And this is how we're going to control the, this is how we're gonna control the boost solenoid. So the very first thing you need to do is set up the throttle percent on the side and the RPM range on the bottom. So you'll do that by clicking this arrow up and down and we can just fill in these areas. So if we just start with like 1000 RPMs, 2000 RPMs, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we're so lucky that our motor revs to eight or more, we'll just put that in. And then up here, you can start with like 100. And since for a lot of cases between 180 is uh, not a huge change in throttle position. We'll just go 80 and then like 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. How about that? So this is throttle percentage, the pos throttle position percentage, and then this is RPM. So we'll hit apply new X and Y values, Z interpolate, and hit close. And we've set up our table. So what this is doing is based on throttle percent and RPM, we can select a duty cycle for the solenoid. And so, for example, if you have a seven PSI wastegate spring and you put the solenoid to the top of the wastegate, like we have here, I'll pull up that example again. If you set the, the solenoid feeding the top of the wastegate and you have a seven PSI spring with if you open the boost solenoid to 100%, it's going to double your boost. So you'll get seven on the bottom, seven on the top, you should get 14 PSI of boost. And so if we go, for example, take the seven PSI wastegate spring, and then we run the duty cycle on the boost controller at 50%, that should give us 3.5 PSI added to the top and if you add those together that will give you 10.5 psi for example so basically if you have the if you use the top port uh, like this with the solenoid any any amount any spring rate you have on the bottom if you open the valve all the way it will just double that spring rate if everything's set up there are some situations where you have bad wastegate priority or the wastegate's too small or things like that where it can mess things up, but typically it will double it. So when you're trying to target a boost pressure, for example, say you want, you have a seven PSI wastegate spring and you want that 10.5 PSI, you would just pick the throttle position and RPM range where you want the solenoid to become active, basically where boost is, or when you want boost to, uh, to be onset, um, and then you'll just set that to 50%. So just hit equals and then 50%. And so in theory, when the turbo is on, as long as it's within that range, uh, you know, some turbos, they don't, they won't even be making boost at like 2000 RPM. So it wouldn't be realistic. It wouldn't do anything to have 50% here. Um, so to be realistic, we just put it in the range where boost is going to be made, where your boost threshold is. So say your turbo makes, starts making positive boost pressure at 3000 RPMs and is at full boost at 4000 RPMs. That would, this would give us basically our effective range of usable area that the boost controller can, can provide control over the boost. Um, and that's not to say you can't make boost at lower throttle positions, especially on a turbo car. I mean, you could at 30% throttle, you could be making a significant amount of boost. So we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but this will get us started. So say this is for your full throttle event. In the next part, we're going to go over how I set it up in my car for the first time, testing at 25% duty cycle, just to see if everything would be safe and without any problems. And then we bump it up to 50% and see where that gets me. So we'll jump over to the data log here. So I have the I have this data log of my car testing this out for the first time and I can show you 
kind of how this works in a data log. So what we're looking at here, it's kind of hard to see over on the right, but in red, you're looking at the boost duty cycle, my requested duty cycle from our table over here. So as a test, just to see, to make sure at a lower duty cycle, to make sure the, that the boost controller is working, I just set 25 from 60% throttle up to 100. So knowing that my car will start making boost around 3000 and when I'm at full throttle, this will absolutely cover the area that I need to try controlling. So as a beginning test, you can get a lot more elaborate with this, but just to test it, I went out and I set it at 25% just kind of across the board like that. Now you might ask, why don't I put 25% everywhere? And the answer to that is because you don't want the solenoid to always be running and put extra wear and tear on the solenoid and have it burn up if you're not using it. So it doesn't uh, benefit you at all to have it running when you're not in boost. So you can basically set it to zero if you're not anticipating using uh, boost in that area. So like idle, off idle, kind of some of the lower throttle areas. And that's just this little side note on there, but that's why we're basically only using this area. And you can fill it in in other areas if uh, if you need to, but this is just to get you going. This is just to show you kind of how it works. So let's jump back over to the data log and you can see right here, the boost duty cycle comes up with throttle position. Throttle position is in yellow and boost right here comes up to a peak, if I can get a peak right here, of 11.8 PSI. So that is basically slightly above my spring pressure in this particular instance. I have about a 10 PSI spring in my wastegate. So 11.8 at 25% duty cycle gives me a little bit of a baseline. So I know that that's good. Now I typically run around 15 PSI and I wanted to go back and make that happen. So I went in and just as another test, I set this equal to 50%. I said, okay, well, let's see what we can get. If my spring pressure is 10 PSI and I add 50% of 10 PSI, which is five PSI to the top, should give me 15. And so that stands to reason that would work. So I just threw in 50% duty cycle on the boost controller and I'm gonna jump back over and I'll show you in the data log where that was. So let's jump over this guy right here. Here we go, this one right here. So you can see now over on the right, my boost duty is set to 50. So as soon as the throttle position and the boost controller turn on, they're at 50%. And the green is my boost indicated and it is 15.8 PSI. So right there, it's kind of a nice happy spot for where my particular setup is at. And so I felt like that was a pretty good first try with this. It's looking like it's working really well right out of the gate. So just to get you started, this will absolutely get you going and you can experiment from there. Just be careful with this. Make sure that your boost cut is set at a reasonable amount for what your setup can take and go have fun with it. So I hope that this has been helpful. I'll put a link to in the description with some of the parts that I used and I hope that this can get you going. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know in the comments and I can try to answer as many as I can. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help grow the channel, please become a member and take it to the next level. Thanks again, have fun.